right, so um, we're going to get started. We only have half an hour, um, and it's going to go fast, I can guarantee it. So uh, we're going to you know, kick this right off, and I promise this is either going to be fun, or at least you guys are going to learn stuff. So one of the two things, pick whichever uh, you'd rather. Um, before we start, can I just ask the participants to come up front? Uh, I believe you know some of you guys, yeah, there we go. So just come up front so uh, we can kind of uh, roll through this. And while they're coming up, uh, I'm going to introduce myself. So I'm Chuka Ikoku. Um, I work at Unity in the analytics department. Um, I lead the data analytics team. And uh, I've been there for a year and a month. And uh, I'm going to be uh, co cooperating, coordinating with my lovely assistants, Maxine and Leon. You guys can see them over there. They're the ones going to be giving prizes. They're with the, uh, they're with the product marketing team. So um, this, uh, this session, we're calling it Trivia Unity by the Numbers. Um, as you guys know, Unity is a huge platform for development of all sorts. We collect a lot of data. Um, I, I get to play with 500 terabytes of data on a daily basis. So you guys can imagine um, how many insights we're able to give. So, uh, you know, I mean, see this as, like I said, a learning experience, but also just understand that Unity is capable of, um, of providing a lot of insights. So that said, uh, I'm going to run through the rules real quick. Um, the format's pretty simple. We have 14 participants, as you guys can see, and um, seven questions. So basically, seven questions, two participants each. You only get to go once, so make it count. And uh, essentially, I, it says three, but we had to you know, lower it to two just for time's sake. Um, and uh, you know, basically, I'm going to read the question, and the two people going in that round Whoever, whoever feels like um, they know what the answer is will push their buzzer. You're each going to get a buzzer. So you push the buzzer, and uh, you give it a go. Now, if you get the answer right, you're going to hear this sound. Can we have this? this uh, <laughs> perfect. There we go. Yeah, you're you're going to hear something. All right, let's try this again. If you get the answer right, you're going to hear this sound. If you get the answer wrong, you're going to hear this sound. So hopefully we're not going to hear that sound too much. We'll hear the right one. Yeah, at least that's the guess. Um, the closest answer wins, right? Because this is a numbers game. So uh, it's going to be hard to guess 56.7. So if you said 55 and that was the closest answer, um, you get it right. If it's one of those where two people have to guess so we can pick the closer one, I'll make that clear as well. But you still know if you got the answer wrong, though, just, just so we're clear on that. All right, so um, that said, we're going to kick it off. And uh, we can start with our first two guests. And uh, yeah, let's give everyone a round of applause, if that's OK. It takes a lot to be up here. And there we go. All right, so you guys, uh, I, I think we could use the mics, right? Those mics on either side? If they're hot. Hello. <laughs> Once you're ready, yes. hold your buzzer, okay. your mic, Got it. and make the sound. You want to test? Sure. You ready? Right. Want to test? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. One, two, three. Oh, wow. Exciting. There you go. And make sure you, hold, make sure you hold it close to the mic so I can hear. Oh. Right? Mike? There you go. Good, good. Mike? <laughs> All right, cool. Let's kick it off. All right, so retention. Uh, as you guys know, in the world of gaming, especially mobile gaming, uh, retention is a big deal. It's one of the key metrics that a lot of games decide on if they're successful or not. So it's something that we look at quite often. We get re retention and engagement. So that said, what is the average day one retention for a mobile game in 2017? Ooh, that was pretty close. Okay, I will. I will you want to be a gentleman? Let the. Okay. Ladies <laughs> first. 25%. 25%. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let me let you go as one and see how, how, close, how much closer we are. Five percent. Five percent. Okay, <laughs> this is for five percent. So the, uh, the actual answer is 26 percent. Wow. wow. That is closer than, that is, that's, that's very, very much close enough. So average day one retention across all mobile games in 2017 is 26 percent. Now, uh, just a quick point here. Games with remote settings on, have a 40% higher retention. And remote settings is basically a tool that we offer that lets you configure your game 
Uh, you could experiment, you could try different builds and see what works. Um, and this is basically part of live operations. So 36%, if you, ha if you basically tinker with your game and make improvements, 26% otherwise. Okay, so can we have our next two contestants for question number two? <coughs> cool, all right, so question number two, what is the most monetized genre second to casino? Oh wow, that was quick. Okay, let's go, buddy. Puzzle games? Puzzle games, okay. What is the second to casino genre? Do you wanna take a guess at it? Oh God, I'm an artist. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I don't. You can guess any genre. Like, what kind of games you like playing? Uh, <coughs> genre, genre, action. Action games. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, we so, so obviously casino is number one. I think that's pretty clear because casino games just basically print money um, out of the people who play them. Uh, but otherwise. Sports, sports games will be the second, mo the second most, but then following on, role playing and strategy. So technically speaking, I, I may want to say that the strategy games may be more action oriented than puzzles. So I think we could give it to the lady on this one. So man, where are we at, man? So far it's 0-2. All right, so uh, the next volunteers, please. And then we'll go for question three. Perfect. It's becoming a battle of the sexes, <laughs> kinda. But I think we're we're running out of women, so it ends here. Own two. So the fate of all men <laughs> developing in unity rests on you, brother. All right. So uh, question number three: What day of the week do people spend the most money? Go. I think we got the guy first on this okay. one. It'll be Saturday. Saturday. And Saturday it is. Oh. Good, 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 good job, Rafa. Okay, well, actually, you know what? Let me give you guys another. Well, let me give you another pass. You could, you know, guess this one. But what time of the day do people spend the most money? I need an hour, a specific hour. This is this. We're doing metrics here, man. We need specifics. Twenty-four, eight o'clock. Central time or Pacific time? <laughs> you have to be that specific. Okay, so if it's eight o'clock, you know what? It's, it's, it's eight o'clock Central time, so I'll give that to you. Six o'clock Pacific time. All right. Okay, so if we can get our next volunteers for the next question. All right. Cool, so yeah, don't forget to hold the buzzer close to the mic so we can hear. Okay, so. What device has the highest retention? iPhone 7, iPhone 7 Plus, or iPad Pro? Let's go. Um, shit, actually. <laughs> <laughs> iPad Pro. Uh, what was that? iPad Pro. The iPad Pro, okay. Um, it is not the iPad Pro. Do you want to take a guess at it, Fern? The 7 Plus. The 7 Plus. You know what? It is not the 7 Plus either, but, but though. The 7 Plus is a phone versus a tablet, and obviously the answer is the iPhone 7. So we're gonna give it to the young man over here. Yeah, so the, the point I wanted to make here, and we could have our next uh, uh, contestants come up while I make this point, but as you guys can see, the iPhone 7 actually has, it's close, you know, but it has the highest retention. And uh, in my experience, there's this myth that the bigger the device, the higher the, the retention or the higher the engaging metrics. But um, that, that's actually a myth. You know, people take their mobile phones wherever they go. People don't always take the tablets. So you may, it, makes, it may make sense why you play more on your phone. Okay, so next question. What VR, what's virtual reality device has the highest retention? We're switching platforms. All right, sir. The, um, the one with the phone, I forget. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I might need just a little more specificity yeah, than might. that. You can't what what kind of answer. phone? Uh, Samsung phone. Okay, so the gear. The gear, thank All you. All right, let's go. Um, it is not the gear. I'm sorry. You want to give it a try? Oh boy. So far we're all for four? Oh, no, all yeah. for, actually no, one for three, women. So it just so happens to be the Oculus Rift. All right. It's a close, it's really, it was either really one of those two or three, you know, so. 
That's a close one. So virtual reality. And, and um, one point I wanted to make here is that people actually, uh, v VR, as you guys know, um, is, is blowing up a lot. Um, there's not that many devices now, but I could bet you over the next few months, over the next year, we're going to see like a plethora of them. All right, so um, still in the VR space, how long does the average VR player in Austin, Texas, spend playing VR games per day? Was that you? I uh, know it's me. Okay, that was you. Let's go. Uh, Forty-five minutes. Forty-five minutes. Okay, forty-five minutes. What's your guess, Woody? One hour. One hour. All right. So this is one of those situations where both of you guys are wrong, but uh, we'll give it to the closer one. So it happens to be twenty-four minutes a day in Austin, Texas. Um, and this is actually not bad. Mo people play mobile games, you know, close to half an hour a day. So we're seeing VR uh, metrics match up uh, a little closely. But we're going to give it to the gentleman um, over on my left. And uh, just for comparison, in the U.S., the average is about 20 minutes a day. And in the world, it's about 17 minutes a day. So people in Austin, Texas play VR games more than your average person in America and more than your average person in the world. All right, so if we can get our next contestants. We're getting to the end of this, so. Oh, wow, out of volunteers. How about that? What was that? Oh, yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> I have some extra drones with me. You get a drone in your kitchen. <laughs> you get All a right. drone and you get a drone. Okay, so uh, what country's PC gamers are the most engaged? Wow. Didn't even finish reading half the question. South Let's Korea. Go, South Korea. Okay, this might be one of those where we do the closest one. What is your guess, buddy? India. India. Was that India? Yes. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> That's a very specific uh, country. Okay, so I think, I think this is one where we said we go with the closest country uh, of guesses. So both wrong. I have to play my sound, you know, just morality. But the number one country is Japan with 111 minutes. So I think, Jap I think South Korea is closer to Japan. I'm, I'm not good at geography, but I'm going to guess that's the right guess. So the prize will go to the gentleman on the right side. Uh, now, actually, you know what? We, we still have one more drone, right? OK. If somebody can guess the second country, and, and I'll open this to anyone in the audience. If you can guess the second country with the highest engagement, you get this last drone that we have. I still haven't heard it. Brazil. Yeah, because I didn't hear the right answer. So it's Greece. Did anybody say Greece? Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> so it's, I was shocked as well. I looked at the numbers again, and you know, the numbers don't lie. So uh, every now and then, the data surprises us. What we thought we knew may not exactly be what is known. So um, and I think that's the beauty of data is that the, the data teaches you things that you may have never known. So that said, um, I just want to thank you guys and at this point open, open it up to questions. I think we went, uh, yeah, we blew through this in 15 minutes. So <laughs> we thought it would take like 25 minutes. I um, have a question. You sure. didn't show any percentages for the VR stats. Is there a reason for that? There kind of <laughs> is a reason. and. Uh, um, Basically, VR is still so young, and a lot of uh, VR game uh, applications are experiences. Uh, what we're seeing in the data is that people don't necessarily go back and back and back to VR games once they've played them. Um, it tends to be a, a one-time use. So because of that, the retention numbers are a little lower. So we're a little skeptical about showing those because we don't want to give the impression that VR is in a highly retentive industry. Um, say it again? That, that's, a good, that's a good point, yeah. I mean, it's a good point. I, I mean, uh, it could be the case that VR experiences are meant to be just like movies. Most people don't go back to watch a movie again the first time they watch it. Um, and, and that would be a big deal because you wouldn't expect repeat business then. So it means you want to cram everything into the first experience. So that could be something that we're learning about the VR industry. Uh, another question over there? With your um, VR playtime stats, um, like your average per day, that particular stat, yeah. is that um, just the average of each individual user that owns VR games, or is it limited to on the days which they play VR? Because I don't know about anybody else, but it's not like part of my daily routine. Right. There'll uh, be like some days where I play VR, some days where I don't. Right. Um, so what, that metric, what we did was we took uh, every day 
and every user and the average time they spent, and then we average that out. So, um, you, I mean, you're right, people don't play necessarily play every, play, play every day, but we have more than enough users to be able to make that estimate of, uh, you know, 26 minutes or whatnot, um, because, you know, I mean, it's millions of people. Um, but I, I, I mean, I do understand that it could vary based on, you know, particular individual behavior. Um, but we try to normalize that by, you know, just looking across the board. Gotcha. Uh, question? The, the highest time for VR? Ooh, that's a good question. I think, I think it was South Korea. But don't, 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 don't take that for gospel, though. Um, I'll have to go back and look at the numbers. But the last time I looked at it, I think it was South Korea. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Please. Okay, so games that use one platform, um, and then, right, 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 right. Um, I think we what we usually see is that, uh, especially because you're, I, I, it seems this is more of a VR specific question, right? Uh, got it. Yeah, let me think about that. Sorry, yeah, so the question is, are there examples of uh, applications that use one platform uh, experimentally to just test and see how it goes, and then, and then they launch it on their, their key platform? Right. Oh, okay, so like from, from mobile to VR, for instance? Oh, that's a good, that's a good one. Um, I haven't seen this in my experience so far. Um, maybe somebody else might have, but uh, I mean that that sounds like a safe bet, you know. Zynga has their Mountain Goat game, that's you know cross-platform. Cool. So I guess yeah, I guess then there are you know situations like that. Question? Yeah. What genre is the most monetized? The most monetized genre. Yeah. Oh, that would be casino. I mean, aside from casino. Oh, that's, besides that's casino, like directly yeah, yeah. like. I yeah. want to take your money. <laughs> uh, ro role playing. So we had casino was the number one from what we saw. Role playing games would be the second, and then uh, strategy was the third. Yeah. Um, you know it's interesting because even after all this time, casino games still make a lot of money. Um, so it's it's almost like a safe bet if you do it right. But we're seeing that there's a lot of potential. And sorry, I, I'm tripping. Sports actually. Sports. <laughs> sorry, sports is the second one. Monetization is sports, but is, was your question retaining or monetizing? Mo monetizing. Yeah, yeah, so sports is second most, and then role playing, and then strategy. Yeah. I think the sports one surprised me a little bit, too, because, uh, yeah, I would have I thought it would be strategy and role play, like Clash of Clans and Machine Zones games, but sports games, people actually spend a lot. Yeah. Question? So we just saw that... Uh, uh, Words with Friends had that's had its 200 millionth download, so retention on that is really high. Are there any are there any s statistics for word games specifically uh, that you have? Yeah, so we um, not necessarily in this slide deck, but uh, we I need to check what Words with, how Words with Friends categorizes their their stuff. It could be because we have a, a puzzle category and we have a board game category, and then we have a, well we have trivia as well, um, and I will guess it's probably one of these three. But those actually um, perform pretty well, just second to the, the top two, top three that we saw. Uh, you said 200 million downloads. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. I play Words with Friends like every day, so I'm one of the suckers, you know, after all these years. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, Leon, will these stats be available online? Yeah, um, I'm usually, uh, interestingly, this session is, uh, uh, normally it would take the form of a report, but we just decided to preview it as part of Unite um, because our data has just grown uh, immensely. But that report will still be there and it will be, it will be much richer than this. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll give um, way more insights in that. Um, one other advantage that we have is that we see to his question there, uh, we have data for pretty much every platform. Um, 
you know, PC, mobile, VR, AR, console to an extent. So we're able to look at performance, you know, across platform, um, and then of course cross genre, any dimension you could think of. So um, we always think it's good to share these insights with the, the development world. Yeah, any other questions? We still have, uh, let's see, te five, ten minutes or so? Yeah, we still have ten minutes, but we don't have to use all the time. Um, going, going. All right, go on. Well, thank you so much. Thank you guys for the time.